Why did you decide to talk to me? Well, basically, I think I tried it. I decided to talk to you was, would be so I could find out more about myself, since I don't know the answers. I, and you are a person who is highly qualified to give me answers, possibly, of what's going on. I already figured this would be a good time to talk to somebody like you, or you, you know. Well, why don't we turn the tables here and you interview me? I'll answer your questions. Interesting. I can live with that. Just so happens I might have a question for you. Hmm. <laughs> what do you think about me? Anything good, bad, or indifferent? Yeah, some of each. <laughs> the, um, the issues about your behavior, I think there are really a couple things to say. The things that I'm most sure of, based on the information you've told me, are that your principal problem has been a warp in your personality. And we classify personality according to different types. And there are two types of personality features that you have a great deal of. The first of them is called antisocial personality disorder. What it refers to behaviorally is someone who does not have a conscience, does not have remorse, does not feel a sense of guilt about most of the bad things they do, is impulsive and violent. Uh, the typical things we see before age 15 in people who earn that label are cruelty toward animals, cruelty toward people, and an awfully interesting part of that condition is that uh, we've got a little bit of knowledge of what causes it and where it comes from. And that's where there's some good news and some bad news. The bad news is that part of where that comes from is hereditary. That there's a genetic basis to being a fearless person. And You've told me about how rarely you have any experience that even begins to resemble nervousness or fear. It takes extreme things to make you have a sense of impending danger. Normal people get fearful about a wide variety of things frequently and would be uh, beside themselves with the kinds of experiences that you had on a weekly basis. You couldn't have done the things you did if you were capable of ordinary fear. But the fact that you're born with a genetic predisposition to fearlessness doesn't mean that it's inevitable for you to become a criminal. Because some people who have that genetic predisposition to fearlessness become pro-social risk takers. They do things like uh, drive race cars, uh, test fly planes, fighter pilots, bomb disposal technicians. Now, those are all jobs where it helps to have a lot of fearlessness. And in fact, some people in law enforcement are brave and have that same capacity to be fearless. And the difference between the people who grow up to be risk-taking good guys with white hats and the people who grow up to be risk-taking bad guys with a long, long rap sheet and a lot of crimes has to do with how their parents raise them. If you raise a kid with love and kindness and affection most of the time, 
you've got a good shot at their growing up to be decent, caring, loving human beings and treating their own kids well. But if you raise a kid the way Stanley raised you, with no love, no affection, constant abuse, beatings for no reason, all you teach is hatred. You make it impossible for that child to grow up and form strong attachments and loving, caring relationships or to be willing to risk themselves to protect the world. So I think you got to be this kind of antisocial, psychopathic person, both by getting Stanley's genes and having Stanley's parenting and your mother's cold, standoffish way of treating you. In other words, that part of you was both born and made. But your own kids and your own grandchildren will turn out according to how you and Barbara raised them, despite whatever genetic influence there may be. The other thing that I think is true about you is another personality style where I think it's fair to say that you've got the features of what we call a paranoid personality disorder. The general rule for someone who is paranoid is to trust no one, let no one get too close to you, and to never forgive anyone who does you wrong. If somebody criticizes them, they're quick to respond with anger or to counterattack. If somebody humiliates them, then they must have revenge. About one to two percent of the population has the paranoid personality disorder. About two to three percent of males and one percent of females have the antisocial personality disorder. And then there's a smaller group that has both. And it was having both that allows you to have this career that you've had and that allowed you to profit from your capacity for a completely emotionless, fearless, remorseless hit by being free of any conscience and also free of friends and of people who could bring you down, you were able to have a very long run as a successful contract killer, which is quite unusual. And you wouldn't have been able to do that had you not had both of those personality flaws in your line of work that turned out to be major advantages, kind of preconditions for a successful career. I appreciate uh, you taking the time and explaining this to me. I am probably the loneliest person in the world because I have nothing I care for. And I can't make any friends to have any kind of a relationship or... So I've lost everything. I've lost everything I ever cared for, everything I ever wanted. It's down the toilet. Since there is no love in my life, I must have something to replace it, so I replace it with hate. Constant hate. Constantly reminded to hate. And what's that do for you? Keeps my left foot going in front of my right foot. Keeps me moving. Without it, I would probably just plop down someplace and have no reason to continue. Is that all you've got left, is hate? That's all I've got left. Everything that I ever cared for is gone. Everything I ever liked is gone. Everything I, that meant anything to me is gone. So hate. That's how you started with, too. Then I've come full circle. It's time for me to die. <laughs>